Need to understand how loyal your customers are to your brand and maybe even predict what's next for your business? There's one question you should definitely be asking. Let's dig into Net Promoter Score, including nuances you need to know and mistakes you should avoid. Net Promoter Score, or NPS, measures customer loyalty by asking, on a scale of zero to 10, how likely is it that you would recommend this company to a friend or colleague? Depending on their answer, your customers will fall into one of three categories, detractors, passives, or promoters. Detractors are unhappy customers. Passives are mostly satisfied, but could be swayed by your competition. Promoters are the loyal customers who will keep buying from you and vouch for your brand. To calculate your NPS, subtract the percent of detractors from the percent of promoters. So if 60% of your customers are promoters and 40% are detractors, your NPS is 20. You might be wondering, what's considered a good NPS? In general, a score of zero to 29 is acceptable, 30 to 69 is great, and 70 to 100 is excellent. But here's the thing, a lot of companies think of NPS like a report card grade, where a low score is bad, end of story. But context really matters, and that brings us to three common NPS mistakes. Mistake number one, not considering cultural norms. Our research has found that customers approach an NPS question differently in different parts of the world. This is especially important for global brands to keep in mind. But even if you're not at that level, it goes to show that there may be other factors at play in your NPS results. Mistake number two, not using benchmarks. A good NPS can vary widely by industry. SurveyMonkey has benchmarks to help you put your results into context and see how you stack up against competition. Internal benchmarks are also important, so collect your NPS at least once every six months. Any progress you make in raising your NPS counts toward your brand health and customer experience. Mistake number three, not asking follow-up questions. Asking customers for context in addition to their rating will help you better understand your NPS. This can be as simple as an open-ended question that asks, what is the main reason you selected that rating? But you can also use skip logic to tailor questions for detractors, passives, or promoters. For example, you might ask a promoter what they like best about your products, while a detractor might see a question like, what was missing in your experience with us? Let's close out with some final NPS inspiration. NPS is an easy way to quantify customer loyalty, and it's benchmarkable. NPS uncovers pain points in your customer journey, so you can focus on addressing them. NPS identifies your brand advocates, so you can solidify those connections and replicate their good experiences. To learn more about how SurveyMonkey can help automate your NPS program, head to the link in the description, and be sure to subscribe to the SurveyMonkey channel for more insights, best practices, and practical tips. Thank you.